Counseling Techniques, Envisioning Client Preferences with Gina Coe and Sandra Collins. This counseling technique involves exploring how clients would like their lived experiences to be different and creating a detailed picture of what that might look like now or in the future. In this video, we intentionally use the miracle question technique from Solution Focused Therapy to provide an example of a lack of fit with client worldview. Gina then demonstrates how to center client perspectives and cultural identities. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Gina. So Sandra, today I wanna to try something a little different. It might feel strange, it might sound a bit strange. Providing transparency. Are you willing to, to try something like that? Clarifying. Sure. Okay, so Sandra, imagine tonight when you go to bed and a miracle happens, okay? okay? You wake up in the morning and you you know that you are living more of your preferred life, a life that you want to live. And I want to ask what would be different in the morning after this miracle happens? Questioning. Okay. Um, can we pause for a second? Because I think I need to to um, process that a little bit because I have a bit of a I have a bit of a reaction to the word miracle mm, okay tell me more about that then probing well I grew up in a home a pretty fundamentalist Christian home where um, where miracles were kind of at least over time I came to see miracles closely tied to denial so I had this sort of trigger around them because, you know, this is like a real example, but kind of a silly example where something would happen to the car. We'd be out driving around somewhere and my mother would get out and lay hands on the trunk of the car and look for a miracle. Mm. And, um, and that was kind of my, my experience growing up was that there wasn't space for the, for the problem at all because if we just had enough faith the problem would disappear right. so anyway, that's kind of yeah I'm kind of being a little bit triggered into that space by the by the question Sandra thank you thank you for sharing this with me it, it shows it really shows the trust we have you. it shows that you feel safe to be able to express this doesn't resonate with you the word miracle triggers something and that example is quite vivid for me reflecting meaning i understand the intent of the question it's just interesting that that's the thing that kind of that's where i kind of went in my mind and you know i learned many amazing things from my mother um, because she was a strong person who taught me to that I could be whoever I wanted to be. So there's this flip side of that um, personality of my mom. And then the, but then there's this other side where, where there wasn't, there wasn't that space for not being okay because we could fix it like that. Mm -hmm. We can just flip our fingers and things will be better. Going back to that, the, the word miracle, right? Clarifying. Miracle, yeah. Just, mm -hmm. Snap our fingers and it's better. Right. Okay, yeah. okay. So now I would like to ask then, you know, when we've been talking about rest is resistant, we've been talking about balance, we've been talking about all the important work you're doing. Summarizing. I would like to ask directly here about this preferred self, this preferred future that you see yourself living. Questioning. Mm -hmm. Does that resonate more? clarifying yeah I was thinking I like the preferred self because one thing I was thinking about was what would it be like for me to bring my whole self into all of my life mm. so for me that's something that that kind of um that question kind of resonates a little bit more for me I love what you said about this when you said my whole self right so when you say that I'm, I'm thinking now with this preferred self that you, you'll be living, Sandra. So what would you be thinking differently, doing differently, even feeling differently? Mm -hmm. So that's when I, when you said the whole self. Questioning. 
Yeah, I think, I mean, last, last week we talked a little bit about um, bringing the art mind into my work and how I'm sort of experiencing that to some degree in, um, in my work with Melissa and moving into that Indigenous framework and coming at it from a more coming at the work from a more grounded, integrated um, spirit, heart, emotion, mind, self. Um, and Ms. Melissa is so great at just like always bringing it back to that. Um, and so I've been thinking a lot about that because it um, it is that sort of whole that whole self um, piece, and I think I've been pretty good throughout my life at splitting off pieces. Mm -hmm. And you know, like uh, I may partly as a person with a disability too. Like I, there are lots of times when I like divide off the brain because I have to get something done, and I ignore the body because it's going to be a problem in that day, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's for me. I think it's it's bringing all of those pieces together in a more holistic way mm -hmm. and when you say that uh, Sandra where where would this holistic way start questioning um, for some people it's about uh, uh, taking action behaving differently or it's more it's it's cultivating understanding my emotions and or the way I think right providing transparency so where would be a place for you to start with this whole self questioning well, I think I'm pretty good at the thinking part. Mm -hmm. So for <laughs> me, smart. I think it it's more, I think it's the other aspects, the, the emotion, spirit, body that need to be elevated more mm -hmm. um, in order to bring more balance. So yeah, so it's, and it's probably all three of those. Um, mm -hmm. Although I think I'm doing relatively well at the body piece right now in terms of um, self care and, mm -hmm. you know, doing the things I need to do to, to um, be well. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe it's emotion and spirit that are the pieces that, um, Mm -hmm. yeah that needs tell to be you know, elevated so sorry Sandra tell me more about the spirit the spirit part tell me a bit more about what what you mean by that probing well I'm not a I'm not a religious person mm -hmm. um, but I but I do have a sense of spirituality and I think I feel my I feel my connection to spirituality in nature predominantly Mm -hmm. um, and in the natural world and also within the women's community um, mm -hmm. so the interconnection within the women's community I that's another place where I get that sense of spirit um, you know we went away for a couple of days um, last week to Maine Island near here it's about an hour on the ferry and we saw so much wildlife and it was just astounding like for we would sit Glow and I for a couple of hours every evening when kind of wildlife seemed to be most active and we just go find a spot to sit for two hours and do nothing except watch the show you know eagles and whales and porpoises and seals and sea lions and like just it was just amazing and so I felt like that was a moment of I need more moments like that where I'm where I'm thinking of nothing I'm just being in that sort of connection to the natural world, I think. Hmm. Sandra, that does sound incredible. It sounds amazing, as you said. Reflecting meaning. So, so what I'm hearing is that we just said making more, maybe being more intentional, right? To be connected to to nature, uh, to um, the women's community, and the part that the other piece is the emotion piece that more connected to your own feelings what what what's more what are my emotions telling me you know and the being you know the being versus doing is not is not either or I'm, I'm hearing you want it's more of a being that you're aiming towards summarizing yeah and I think the the emotion is an important part of that being you know like mm -hmm. and and maybe it's uh following my gut you know, following my gut more mm. and um, 
you know, I have, I have had passwords on my computers that are reminders to follow my gut for years. <laughs> Just so every morning I have to type these things in and it's like, oh. and it does help me to kind of in that moment, um, ground and, um, yeah. And I just, I mean, even as we're talking about this, I feel like if I can, if I can grasp that, that sense of wholeness mm -hmm. in a different way, then I, then I will be able to approach, um, the various tasks and pieces of my life in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and when I get the sense that I'm losing that sense of wholeness, that's a red flag. Yeah, yeah. So, so before we say goodbye, Sandra, I went out, I'm thinking about one tangible thing in terms of when you said follow my gut. Providing transparency. How about a screensaver? Because we all have a phone, you know, to have that a, a quote or a mantra such as that, right, mm -hmm. to cultivate this whole self. And every time you turn your phone on, you see follow my gut. Questioning. Yeah, that's a good idea because, you know, I have, I have three screens sitting here. <laughs> or, so I put it on, putting something on my computer screen yes. too, right. Would be, would be a good way to just have that sort of constant reminder. And I don't know if it would be a saying for me, it would maybe be an image. Okay. There we go. So maybe that's something I'll think about this right. week. Is so, to think about in terms of moving towards your preferred self, right? This whole yeah. This yeah. Whole self. Summarizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Thanks, Jeannie.